This is the star of the day, Arangus Mr. Sidii. Today, teaming up with Ed's orchids, honeybees and orchids, and cloud forest vibes. Thank you very much for joining me on this care collab video. I appreciate having you here. And yes, this is a very unusual setup. Normally these Orangus Mr. City I would be on mounts. And I am going to unpot this one. First of all, actually it needs unpotting and repotting anyway because you can see the roots are in active growth. There's even some branching going on. But I want to unpot it as well on camera while we do this care collab series because I cannot exactly tell you if my system here, Leka and Semi Hydro, is actually working for this orchid and there's only one way to find out. And I do want to take advantage of these roots, get them in a pot, and then get the orchid growing again for the following years. Now, here's the thing. I can say it's doing well because it bloomed for me in this setup. I lost two leaves prior to putting it into semi-hydro. It is growing two more leaves. So basically, that's it. Job done. It's doing well. So why wouldn't this setup work? Well, it, even if it's working, I still feel that it could be of interest to see actually what the roots are doing in the pot after approximately eight months in the setup, maybe less. But the reason I put it in here is I couldn't keep up with its needs on a mount. Because they come from the southern part of Africa, including the country, South Africa, usually from 60 meters to about 1,200, 220 meters like that, they are on twigs, on branches, low, down, some, some are found like down by a riverbed, extremely high humidity. And even if they're upper, in the upper elevations of let's say 1,000 meters, they are still in shade, very deep shade, where there's a sort of a steamy atmosphere going on. I have none of that in my climate here in southern Spain. So I was losing roots, as you can see. The root tips started to die back. And normally, Arangus roots do not branch. So when you've got a root that is actively growing, but then stops, it's kind of you know, detrimental to the health and the development of the orchid. That is why I decided to pot her up. Another reason was I didn't always want to remoss. So I potted her up. Oh, there was ceramis in here as well, which we will be using again. Woohoo! And I didn't always want to remoss on my mounts because in the summer I have to be very, very heavily watering because I have extremely low humidity. That means my moss would deteriorate very quickly and look nasty and I can't stand it. I just cannot. When it's all fresh on a natural mount, then that's great. But not when it's all slimy and green. So you can see that the roots that I put in have survived, except for where there was a kink and that root failed. So we'll get rid of that. But considering that it was with ceramis and Leka, I would say that these roots are still viable they are not in any way squishy or soft. So this setup for me is a go. And we're gonna be doing it again. I'm going to re-pot it in the exact same way. I'm gonna use the old media because it is not deteriorated. Just snip, snip off the old and the dead and then we shall see. Now in the winter, this one needs what they call a rest, sort of, but it must never really dry out for too long, according to the books. So that's why I came to the conclusion that I would do semi-hydro with this orchid, even though it is not conventional. 
because I needed to make sure that I would have her in a few years time. And the fact that she dropped two leaves super quickly last year had me concerned. So because they grow in a pendant growth habit, I would like to lean her, but I want these roots in the pot. So it's gonna look a little bit funky for a while. And because I want her a little bit drier, just to be on the safe side, I always say that complacency and orchids are two words that don't go well together. I've made up this tub here that I saved from a product. I've put two holes in it. It's a little bit larger, but it gives me a little bit more flexibility with regards to how dry I want to keep it drier. And semi-hydro, nothing is dry, but drier. I want to keep the content. And I hope that you can hear me above the wind. It's just that it's high noon to get this done because I want to take advantage of the growing root tips. I will be using this again. In the summer, for example, on a mount, I'd be spraying this orchid down several times a day, which is fine if you've got the time. I'm hoping to eventually come around to a point where I won't have the time again, but the orchid needs to be doing well at a desired, preferred humidity level of 70 to 85 percent. And then my climate in the hot months, and I always try to see, can I take care of an orchid on a worst case scenario basis? My climate in the hot months has a humidity of 28 <laughs> percent, and that is the norm. So spraying this one down with hot winds abounding as well. That is just, you know, I can't keep up. And I really don't want to be losing roots simply because I am not able to keep it humid enough. I do not also in the winter or in the summer supplement with a humidifier. This orchid grows outside for me in the summer, very, very shaded, but Still, the hot winds will dry the whole substrate of the mount out. I have had a lot more success, let's say, to keep her happy. I had my blooms last a lot longer while she was in the semi-hydro setup in the first time she bloomed for me in that setup. If you're considering potting this orchid up, if your climate is extremely dry, you can see that it is not detrimental to the roots whatsoever. Being, again, that Arangus roots do not branch readily or happily. Once the root tips have died off, that's how they stop. But all these roots did not continue to deteriorate. So they are able to function. And that is the most important part in my eyes. I was losing them while they were on a mount. So let me just see if I can do this orchid justice again. And I filled up Lekka only right to where the holes are. And I'm going to see how my new roots can fit into this pot without the Lekka touching the root tips. Arangus roots are sensitive. With any Angrecoid, roots do not like to be disturbed. So that would look like she's too high in the pot for me. I'm going to take some Lekka out and let's have another look-see. South Africa, Malawi, Zimbabwe, riverbeds. So I've got my roots tucked in nicely. I know you can't see that, but at this point, I'm just going to fill around with Lekka gently. Just trying to maintain that branching and being controlled about it. I believe I snapped one of the long roots that went in. I can see a little crack, which is not a good thing. I'm not happy about that. 
That means that that root could possibly die off. And the next time we see this orchid, it's probably going to be died off like we saw in the first one. So now I'm putting the ceramis around where the roots are and we're used to the ceramis being there. I have some seashells in my ceramis. That was from a long time ago. I mixed all my ceramis together with seashells. But other than that, this orchid is then being treated as a semi-hydro setup, flushed regularly. And I drain the reservoir after a flush during the winter. There's enough wet environment in the ceramis and the leka to keep it happy during the winter for a long time. It doesn't have to have water in the reservoir. So I can really control the needs of this orchid in this setup in my environment. My winter temperatures inside have this winter dropped to 14 degrees Celsius, which is not something it likes at all. The minimum temperature it would prefer is 20 degrees. I do not see any signs of stress at this point in time, but I am monitoring it very, very closely. And one would say, well, this is not a good time to be disturbing it then. Yes and no, because it is an active growth. So I'm pulling the trigger and I'm putting it into a bigger pot and a long pot, because if I hadn't cracked that one root that went in, you see how long the roots get on in its, their natural growth. And that is something I would like to encourage, and that's why I make the container a little bit taller. Now, I could raise her up a little bit, which is what I'm going to do, just by squeezing the pot and getting in there and raising her gradually as I squeeze. That is an abrasion the roots do not like at all. I'm very, very conscious of the fact that this orchid is not happy with what I'm doing to it. My plan is now just to leave her alone and hope she forgives me and doesn't notice what has happened to her and that that little crack in the root down there will heal and not ruin the growth of that root. So she is upright, which is not normal for her, but I will position her towards the light exactly, exactly how she was before. So her light source will come from this side and then let her lean back into and towards the light. I like my Arengus to be Pendant, I have no problem with that at all. For the purpose of getting those roots in the pot, I needed to bring her upright. Every movement regarding relocating, repositioning an orchid is a form of stress. Even if the orchid is established in the pot and then you change its direction of light, it has to exude energy in order to go back and grow again towards the light, which is what it would naturally want to do. So I am very, very mindful that now that I've repotted her, I am going to have her in the same direction of light. So at least that stress factor is minimized. I am also not cutting off the second spike because the orchid hasn't absorbed it yet. So just to recap, I have extremely dry summers. My humidity is about 28% for most of the summers. When I fertilize her, I fertilize at 300 parts per million. And I do that every time I feel the pot is lighter. I leave the reservoir full. I flush twice through the pot with plain RO water before filling the reservoir again with fertilized water. Today, I'm not doing anything because the leka is wet as it is, and so was the ceramis that you saw when we unpotted her. In a couple of days, I will flush through with plain RO water, empty the reservoir, and because it's winter, I will only fill the reservoir to half full, 
so that I have a little bit more of a drier atmosphere going on in order to protect the roots that were aerial. Now the other thing could be they were aerial roots that are going to deteriorate. That is a risk, but because they are actively growing, it's possible I'm going to get away with it. I got away with it the last time I did this and put growing roots into the pot, but what I didn't get away with was having a cracked root survive, as we saw. So now there is a cracked root in the pot. We'll see what happens in a year's time if I have to intervene one more time. But for the time being, I am happy that the roots that were in the pot for the last, I think it's eight months, they did not deteriorate and they are actually good to go and functional. In the winter, I have her inside under blurple lights and she's directly under the beam of the blurple lights in order to encourage growth. I cannot give her the minimum temperature of 20 degrees. Um, I do not supplement with a heater in my dining room either. So she's been tolerating 14 degrees Celsius in the dining room on and off. It's not a constant low temperature, but on and off 14 degrees at night. I don't think I've missed anything, but if you think I've missed something, then please feel free to address that in the comments below. I can only hope that the mic did not take the wind too harshly and that you heard what I was talking about. If not, I hope that the camera was in focus. I would like to say thank you to Ed from Ed's Orchids, Cloud Forest Vibes, Honeybees and Orchids for joining me on this Care Collab video of the Arangus mysticidii. Now I can only hope that my repot is going to be okay for her and we will find out in future updates. If you see this video a little further down the line and you would like to join in on this Care Collab initiative, please contact any one of us. My email is always in the description below and we'd be happy to have you on board for the next update videos. Thank you ever so much for watching. A little bit unconventional also weather-wise, I do apologize, but I appreciate your patience with me and the circumstances at the moment. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.